Hey everyone, CNC Keith here. In this video, Marty is going to show us how to bench test access motors and drives with the Acorn CNC controller. He'll be using a Gecko Drive G540 to demonstrate with. While you might not be using this exact access motor drive combination, the procedure points and helpful hints that Marty gives along the way apply to any access motor drive combination. Accompanying this video is the Acorn installation manual, which is found under the All Acorn Documentation thread on the Centroid Acorn CNC Tech Support Forum. As with any access motor and drive combination, you have to do a little bit of preparation with that access motor and drive before beginning the bench test procedure. Things like proper wiring between the motor and drive, uh, dip switch settings, current limiting resistors, uh, power proper power supplies, voltage and size, especially important with stepper motors, how you have your stepper motors wired. Um, if you're using AC brushless motors, the parameters have to be set up properly in the drive before you can begin this bench test procedure. Now, Marty has listed here the prerequisites for this bench test video. These are the things that he has taken care of before shooting this video. So without further ado, take it away, Marty. Okay, in this video, I'm going to go over uh, connecting the Gecko Drive G540 to the Centroid Acorn. Um, it's pretty straightforward, actually pretty easy because right here, right here you see a DB25 female connector and on Acorn, there is a DB25 female connector. So the prerequisites to this uh, install, and I'll be installing on the bench, is you will have to have your motors uh, already chosen. Um, you'll select those and make sure you got your, make sure you got your cut sheets on your stepper motors. Make sure you've read through the G540 manual it's got lots of good information in it, uh, including uh, sizing your power supply and setting the uh, uh, current limiting feature in the G540 using the resistor. So you will have had to, have, again, selected your motors. You'll already get your resistors installed in the DB9 connector per the manual. You'll have selected your power supply. I'm using a 48 volt power supply here, it's just wired to 110. And uh, my yellow wire is to the positive and my black wire is to the negative. That's the motor power for the uh, steppers, okay? The other thing you'll have already needed to have done is completed the bench test. Centroid has a video on doing the bench test. That's basically taking your Acorn kit and the power supply included with it, along with the shielded ethernet cable, connecting it to your PC, which I have over here on the left side, meets the Centroid minimum uh, hardware requirements to run CNC 12. And you will have installed the latest version of CNC 12 on the PC. And you will have gotten the Acorn communicating with the PC. As you see right here on my monitor, uh, CNC 12 is up. Basically, I've established communications between the PC and the Acorn. And again, the bench test needs to be done. You will have needed to wire the stepper motors properly to the DB9s, uh, connect, to the DB9 connectors included with the G540 kit. And we're going to use the G540 manual for reference. We're also going to use the latest G540 uh, drive only schematic from Centroid. Uh, this one happens to be uh, drawing number. S14979.DWG. I'm going to go ahead and power down the system by clicking shut down and power off. This will power down the PC, and when it goes off, then I can go ahead and turn power off to Acorn. Okay, go ahead and turn the power off. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is as we follow the schematic, here's our power supply. And that's already connected to our Acorn right here. It comes pre-wired from Centroid. And what we need to do is we need to add this jumper from H4, 24 volts in. It comes down, comes around. It goes to the spare positive 24 volt DC terminal right here. That enables the inputs and is required. So I'm going to go ahead and 
wire that in. And it comes around to the 24 volt in H4. I'll tilt that up so you can get a look at it. Here's that jumper from 24 volt DC. Comes around and it goes to this terminal right here. 24 volt in. So it's screened right here on the board. So that's that's required. Okay. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to wire our e-stop button. You'll see here there's two normally closed contacts on that e-stop button. One of them is going to go over to input 8, and then the other one is going to go over here to COM, the spare COM terminal, common terminal. So I'm going to go ahead and get that, that first set of wires wired. Here's the terminal block. I'm going to use this set of terminals right here. Got a black and a red. So my red is going to go to input 8. My black's going to come around to the spare COM terminal on the uh, power connector, on the Acorn power connector. Okay. So here you see, here's that red wire going to N8. And then here's the black wire running over here to the COM terminal. All right. The other e-stop is going down to terminal 10 on the gecko drive and it's going to terminal 12. Terminal 12 is the common. It's got the motor power supply common here and it's got the e-stop common here. Again, goes common, goes up to that other normally closed contact block and then from the normally closed contact block it goes to terminal 10. If you look at the schematic the terminal number one is closest to the DB25 and 12 is closest to the edge. I'll show you what I like to do. Took a fine tip Sharpie and I numbered these terminals. One, here's the DB25. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. It's easier to uh, follow that way. I'm going to start with 12, which is the common from the power supply and that common from the e-stop button. Okay, I'm going to take the common from the power supply and slip it into 12. I'm going to take the wire from the e-stop button. I'm going to slip it in there as well. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm, while I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and get the positive 48 volts into terminal 11. Give them a tug. And now our e-stop wire is going to go into terminal 10. So here you can see is the common in 12 and the common to the e-stop button in 12. And then 48 volts positive to 11. And then the other e-stop contact into Terminal number 10. I'm going to give these a tug, make sure they're good. They seem good. All right. Get our e-stop button situated here. Now we want to go ahead and connect our DB25 cable to the Gecko drive, G540, and to the Acorn. Okay. Okay, on the G540, there's a switch here called ch that's labeled charge pump. We want to go ahead and turn that on. That's because the, the Acorn will supply the charge pump signal via the DB25 to the G540. All right, the next thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and plug in all our stepper motors and 
tighten down the screws to the G540. Okay, we'll get our last motor connected. I highly recommend that you mount the G540 against a heat sink because it'll get really hot and if you mount it, mount a heat sink to the bottom of it, it'll help pull the heat away from it. In fact, the manual will explain that to you. Also, do not forget to use the properly sized resistor to limit the current to your motors. If you don't put them in there, then it's going to give you full current to the motors, the max that the G540 can, can provide, and that's 3.5 amps. So make sure you size your motors. If your motors are 3 amp, make sure you use the resistor for 3 amp. If your motors are 2.5 amps, make sure you use the proper resistor. They go in the, into uh, terminals 1 and 5 inside these DB9s, okay? That way, when there's no motion commanded, the G540 will throttle down the current to the motors and keep them cool. Okay, we've got everything wired up, ready to go. We've got our one contact block going to input 8 and common. We have the other contact block going to the G540, common terminal 12 and 10 for the e-stop. And then uh, the, the power supply is going into common, terminal 12, and 11. The 48 volt DC is going into 11. We've got our DB25 uh, cable, and this is a straight through cable, not a serial cable. It's a DB25 male, male, straight through. Don't get anything else. And we've got our motors wired up. So the next thing to do is let's go ahead and power up the system. You'll notice there is a red LED on the Gecko drive. On the G540, it says fault. That's totally normal right now. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to go into CNC 12 and configure the software. Okay, let's go ahead and start CNC 12. And everything's powered up. If everything comes, everything's powered up, Acorn's good connection, then CNC 12 will come up. Okay, everything's up. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to go ahead and click Utility, Acorn Wizard. This is where we're going to configure CNC 12. Okay, we're going to go up here to the very top one is Axis Drive Type. Click on it. And then we're going to go down to this list. This is a list of, of drives. And we're going to click on G540 Drive Only, Gecko G540 Drive Only. Click on it one time, and then we're going to come down here to load drive. It will confirm. Are you sure you want to reset the configuration to drive Gecko G540 drive only defaults? We're going to say yes. Okay. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at input definitions. You'll see that it is pre-configured drive OK and e-stop OK. Drive OK, this input 5 is... Uh, fed back to Acorn via the DB25, so there's no wiring involved there. And then the e-stop button, this is the one we connected to uh, input 8 on Acorn. Let's look at output definitions. Okay, you'll see automatically output 3 is assigned to charge pump. You cannot change that, that's the way it has to stay. Charge pump when you're using G540 is always on output 3. Let's go to axis configuration. All right, you'll see that CNC 12, when we loaded that drive, has pre-configured the steps per revolution to 2,000, which is correct, because the, G, the G540 um, uh, does micro-stepping, and it multiplies it by 10. There are 200 steps per revolution in a standard uh, stepper motor, and times 10 would be 2,000. So these are also preset for us. Overall turns ratio, it defaults to 5, but I'm going to set it to 1, and I'll show you why. Set them all to 1. Okay, we're going to tab. No, we don't, we're not messing with, we're not going to work with backlash. Let's set our max rates to 200 on all three axes. And let's set our fast jog to 100. And our slow jogs can be left at 10. 
Max rate is when you call a G0, a rapid move. That will move the axis at, its, at, its, at this value, which is 200 inches a minute. And fast jog, that's when uh, you got the tortoise and the hare on the virtual control panel. Um, if we go to, we're going to get 10 inches a minute. That's slow jog. And then we go to the hare, we'll get 100 inches a minute. Okay? Let's go to homing and travel. By default, the wizard, this radio button is selected, wizard to generate automatic home program based on selections below. And then we're gonna do simple homing. Simple homing means we're gonna set home right where the motors are at. Um, we don't have any switches on it yet, so we're gonna do simple homing. Let's go ahead and write the settings. There's no need to do anything else to get these motors turning, so we'll write the settings to CNC control configuration. Write these settings to the CNC control configuration. We click on yes. It says, warning, PLC configuration has changed. The wizard in CNC 12 must be shut down and restarted for PLC changes to apply. We click OK. Click OK. It says, please power cycle Acorn board and wait for the heartbeat, then press OK to continue. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and unplug my power supply to Acorn to power it down. I'm going to wait about five seconds. Okay, I'm going to power it back up. There's an LED to the right of the RJ45 Ethernet connector. It, when powered up, it blinks rapidly, and then when it's booted and online, it blinks at about one pulse per second. Okay, now it's saying, please power cycle Acorn board, wait for heartbeat, then press OK to continue. So we've done that, we click OK. Now CNC 12 is restarting. Okay, it says e-stop detected. I'm gonna go ahead and cycle the e-stop button. Okay, it's released. Let's back up a little bit here so you can see what's going on. If you look at the G540, you'll notice that green LED on power is on now. And I can hear my motors, the rotors are locked. So we have power now. The motors are energized. Okay. Got the motors where you can see them. We've got our screen. It says, warning, machine home not set. Jog all access to their home positions. Press cycle start to set machine home. Well, let's, uh, let's make all those flags vertical. So we're gonna go up to the VCP. I don't have a touch screen, so I'm gonna use my mouse. I'm gonna hit X minus. You can see that this is X, Y, and Z, so X is Moved. I'm going to move Y so that the flag is in the 12 o'clock position. And I'm going to move Z so it's in the 12 o'clock position. It's pretty close. Now, that's so we jog them, jog all axis to their home positions, press cycle start to set machine home. I'm going to press cycle start. Okay, now you'll recall that we set one turn per inch. Let's go into MDI, manual data input. Let's do a G0X1. This motor should rotate one revolution when I press cycle start. So I'm going to go over here. This is the cycle start button. I'm going to press cycle start. And it did. It turned one revolution. Let's do the same thing to Y. G0Y1. It also turned one revolution. So that was the benefit of setting the, the revolution. Let me show you. Let's go back into utility, wizard. Configuration. So where it says overall turns ratio, we set them to one. That was the 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 Benefit of setting the one is the motors will turn one revolution for one inch. It says right here, turns per inch. So it's if, when I call one inch, it's going to turn one revolution. So by setting the overall turns ratios to one on all three axes, that means the motor will turn one revolution per inch. That means that we got the steps per revolution correct. Okay, let's go ahead and test Z. G0Z1. Cycle start, watch that 
NEMA 34 there. And it turned one revolution. Now let's send it back. We go G0, Z0, and then we're going to go cycle start. And you'll see that turned one revolution back the other way. Let's do the same thing to Y. G, 0, Y, 0. G0 is a rapid move. Y is the axis we're calling, and we're telling it to go back to 0. So let's do cycle start. And it turned one revolution, as you saw. And let's do X. G0, X0. Cycle start. And it also turned one revolution. Okay, guys, so you saw how simple it was to go ahead and get uh, G540 connected to Acorn as drive only, and this, how simple it was to get it working on the bench uh, just by plugging in that DB25 connector and three wires. E-stop on G540 terminal 10, 48 volts positive on G540 terminal 11, and E-stop common and 48 volt uh, power supply common on pin 12. And then uh, we added that jumper um, from 24 volts around to H4 24 volts in. And we successfully configured CNC 12 to drive the G540 and the stepper motors. I hope uh, this helps you and good luck with your project. <laughs>